Hello everyone. Welcome to my series of lessons on the physics of sailing. I'm working on some new videos, but I'm also reposting all my current videos so my new subscribers can start to watch them from the beginning, in preparation for the next boating season. First, I need to state my standard disclaimer. These videos are for educational and explanatory purposes only, and are only intended to introduce basic topics for beginner cruisers in light to moderate wind conditions. They are not intended to guarantee your safety on the water. Nothing, including these videos, can replace taking accredited courses covering all aspects of basic cruising from qualified and experienced instructors, and gaining experience by starting slowly and increasing your knowledge and experience over time. You are responsible for obtaining a marine weather forecast and limiting your activities to weather conditions within your own level of experience and ability. When you go out on the water, you are enjoying yourself at your own risk. This lesson is about points of sail and their efficiency, and also about port and starboard tacks. It's a bit of terminology combined with a bit of physics. Okay, first let's look at a diagram that shows all the points of sail. This diagram shows all the main points of sail, and we'll look at them one at a time. The first thing to keep in mind is that this wind arrow shows the direction the wind is blowing as it approaches your boat. But the important thing for points of sail, from your perspective on the boat, is where is the wind coming from? It's the same for weather forecasts, which tell us where the wind is coming from, not where it's blowing to. We don't care what happens to the wind after it passes us by. The next important thing to understand is that this wind arrow represents the apparent wind over your boat, not the true wind. Just be clear that this diagram is not constant with respect to the ground. It's constant with respect to the apparent wind over the boat. If you're not clear on that, you should watch my earlier lesson on true and apparent wind. Okay, starting from the leftmost vessel in this diagram, the first boat is said to be in irons. Here, you're pointing directly head to wind. If you have no headway and there is no wind pressure in your sails to propel your boat forward, then you have no steerage and you can get stuck in this position. The term in irons comes from the old age of sail, when a sailor might be put into irons for some indiscretion. In irons, you have no freedom to move. If you get stuck in this situation, you may have to push your boom out and hold it off to one side to try to move your boat off to one side where you can fill your sails with wind again and get underway again. The next boat is sailing as far up into the wind as it can. It can't sail any closer to the wind without maybe going into irons again. When you're sailing as close to the wind as possible with your sheets hauled in all the way, that's a close haul. Of course, it's not really possible to tell from this diagram whether this vessel is truly pointing as high into the wind as it can. Maybe you could get a better sail trim and point a little higher. But in this set of diagrams where we're trying to identify the various points of sail, there's no other vessel pointing higher. So we'll go with this one as being on a close haul. The next three boats are sailing across the wind. When you're sailing across the wind like this, you're said to be reaching. So, the first of these boats is on a close reach, because it's sailing close to the direction that the wind is coming from. On a close reach, the wind is coming from forward of the beam, but it's not close hauled. The second of these three boats is on a beam reach, because the apparent wind is coming from directly a beam. The third boat is on a broad reach. Here, you're said to be sailing broad to the wind, so it's a broad reach. On a broad reach, the apparent wind is coming from aft of the beam. The last boat in this diagram is running directly downwind, so it's said to be on a run, and the sails are carried on opposite sides with the wind coming from directly aft. 
This is also called sailing wing on wing because it looks like two wings spread out to opposite sides of the boat. Sailing wing on wing is actually the trickiest point of sail to maintain. The waves will be coming from behind and they can push your boat first one way and then the other as they go by. So it can take a lot of effort to constantly steer the boat to point downwind. But in lighter winds, if you have no reference to the land, it can be confusing to know which way to steer if you go slightly off course and one of your sails starts to luff and stall. You don't want to have to carefully think it through which way to turn to refill a luffing sail. So there's a simple rule to remember. The rule is to get back on course, steer away from the luffing sail. So if you're using a wheel, turn away from the luffing sail. If you're using a tiller, point the tiller towards the luffing sail and that will turn you away. Okay, now what happens if you don't correct your course when your main sail starts to luff? Then you may be sailing by the lee. Sailing by the lee can be a dangerous point of sail. Let's look at what that is. Here is a boat that is sailing wing on wing downwind. But let's say your course starts drifting towards the mainsail like this. Now, the wind is actually coming from the same side of the boat that the main is being carried on. But the mainsail and boom should be carried on the lee side of the boat, not the windward side. With the wind now coming from what should be the lee side, you're sailing by the lee. While you're sailing by the lee, initially there can be enough wind force in the mainsail to keep it full and hold it off to the same side. But if you keep turning in that same direction towards the mainsail like this, the wind is eventually going to get on the other side of the main, and then the mainsail and the boom will suddenly snap all the way over to the other side and violently swing through the cockpit at very high speed, potentially injuring crew and damaging equipment. That's called accidental jibing, and it can be very dangerous in higher winds. So sailing by the lee is to be avoided. One thing you can do to prevent this from happening if you're sailing wing on wing on a long downwind leg is tie a line from the boom down to a cleat on the deck to prevent the boom from swinging across the cockpit. That's called rigging a preventer. Okay, now let's talk about what tack these boats are on. The tack is important because it will define which boat has the right of way when two sailing vessels are approaching each other. But you'll have to wait for my lesson on rules of the road for a complete description of that. Here, we'll just see how to determine the tack of a boat under sail. These four boats are on a port tack because the wind is approaching from the port and filling out the sails to the starboard. The tack you're on, port or starboard, is where the wind is coming from. Again, the important concept is always, where is the wind coming from? On the first four boats, the wind is coming from the port, so they're all on a port tack. But for the last boat, the wind is coming from directly aft, so it may appear to be an indeterminate tack. But this boat is considered to be on a starboard tack because the mainsail is being carried on the port side. The windward side of the vessel is considered to be opposite to where the mainsail is carried. So this boat is on a starboard tack. This is true even for a boat sailing by the lee. If this boat was sailing by the lee, then the wind would be coming from the port side. But it's still considered to be a starboard tack because another approaching vessel needs to determine which vessel is the stand-on vessel and which vessel has to give way. Another approaching vessel can't tell whether or not you're sailing by the lee. It can only judge which tack you're on by observing where your mainsail is being carried. So even if you're sailing by the lee, it's still a starboard tack. If a boat is sailing wing on wing like this, but with the main carried on the starboard side, then that would be a port tack. Incidentally, a boat in irons under the collision regulations would be considered a vessel not under command, and other approaching vessels would have to give way. One good reason to keep your main on the port side when sailing wing on wing like this is because under the collision regulations, a vessel on a port tack gives way to a vessel on a starboard tack. So if you're sailing wing on wing with the main carried on the port, you're on a starboard tack. And if another vessel approaches on a port tack, you wouldn't have to turn off your course to avoid a collision. The other vessel would have to give way. That's not always true if another vessel is approaching on the same tack, 
But as I mentioned, you'll have to wait for my lesson on rules of the road for a complete explanation of this. Okay, a common question that I get asked is, which is the fastest point of sail? There are opposing factors that influence the speed of your boat on the different points of sail. Let's look at those. Let's say this boat is sailing on a close hull, and let's say this is the true wind. As we saw in the lesson on true and apparent wind, there is a wind coming from directly forward that is induced by the forward speed of your boat under sail. That's the induced wind. The vector addition of the true wind and the induced wind produces the wind that you and your boat feel, which is the apparent wind. The apparent wind is always strongest on a close haul because the induced wind adds the most to the true wind. But a close haul isn't the fastest point of sail because there's an opposing factor. We need to look at the forces in the sails generated by the wind. Here's the force vector which represents the net force acting in the foresail. I'm only showing the force vector for the foresail, but it's also the same situation for the mainsail. The driving force generated by the wind always acts perpendicular to the surface of the sail like this, because you cannot push sideways along the surface of a sail. The wind can only push directly outwards. We can subdivide this force vector into a sideways component of the force and a forward component. As you can see, with the sails hauled in close to the center line of the boat, most of the force is directed sideways. There's only a small forward component of the force available to drive your boat forward. The sideways force causes excessive healing of your boat and tends to generate a lot of leeway or drifting sideways downwind. So there's a lot of apparent wind to generate a lot of force, but much of that force is directed sideways, not forward in the direction you want to go. Also, the more your boat heels over, the less deep is the keel, and the more you will slip downwind. But make no mistake, if you're sailing to an upwind destination, this is still the best point of sail to be on. But when it comes to analyzing the different points of sail to determine which is the fastest, a close haul isn't it. Now let's look at a boat sailing downwind. Here's a boat sailing downwind with the true wind coming from aft. Here again, I'm only showing the force vector for the foresail, but the same is true for the mainsail. It's not hard to see from this that most of the force generated in the sails is now directed in the direction you're pointing. Ah, but there's another opposing factor. If I add the induced wind to the true wind to show the apparent wind, you can see that when you're sailing downwind, the induced wind subtracts from the true wind, and there's a lot less apparent wind available to drive your boat forward. While most of the force is pushing you in the direction you want to go, there's a lot less apparent wind to drive your sails. Imagine trying to sail downwind at six knots, in a six knot wind. It's impossible, of course. You can't do it, because then there would be zero knots of apparent wind to fill your sails. You probably can't sail at more than a couple of knots at most. Another factor is that you also can't trim your sails so efficiently because you can't get both telltales flying with the wind coming from aft. Okay, now let's look at a close reach that's just slightly ahead of a beam reach. In this diagram, I've shown the point at which the true wind and the apparent wind are equal in strength. They form an isosceles triangle with the induced wind. As you can see, it's a close reach just slightly ahead of a beam reach. Downwind from here, the induced wind subtracts from the true wind. Upwind from here, the induced wind adds to the true wind. It depends on your boat and sail design, but somewhere in this region, there's a balance point between having enough apparent wind over your boat to generate a lot of drive in your sails, but also with enough of that drive directed forward. I haven't done a careful calculation, but somewhere in this region will be your fastest point of sail. So if you're sailing to an upwind destination, a close haul is still your best point of sail. It's just not the fastest point of sail. And if you're sailing to a downwind destination, you may have to sail on a broad reach and jibe your way downwind to get where you're going because you won't have enough apparent wind to sail directly downwind. Okay, one mistake many people make is they think that hardening in your sheets always makes your boat go faster, even on a close reach. 
That's not true. They think this because when you're sailing a close haul, you have to harden your sheets to point higher into the wind, and everything feels a lot faster. The apparent wind is the strongest, and you're sailing into oncoming wind and waves, your boat is heeling over a lot, and it all feels fast and furious. So some people mistakenly associate hardening your sheets with going faster. But that's not true. Hardening your sheets allows you to point further upwind on a close haul, but by itself, it doesn't make your boat go faster. On a close reach, ease your sheets to get both your telltales flying to generate your best speed. There's an old saying, when in doubt, let it out. You can watch my earlier lesson on basic sail trim again to reaffirm this in your mind. Okay, that's the end of this lesson. I hope that was all clear. That was a lot for one lesson, but watch it again to make sure you understand it all. In the next lesson, we'll look at weather helm, what it is, and how to control it. I hope you enjoyed this video. These videos are all the lectures I give on board my Cruise and Learn trips for the basic, intermediate, and advanced cruising courses for the Sail Canada course standards. My videos are not sponsored, so if you find this video useful, please feel free to buy me a beer on PayPal for each video you like and find useful. You can send it from your PayPal account or your friend's PayPal account if you don't have one to the email address I've included in the description below. And hey, to all you instructors out there, feel free to show these videos to your students if you think they're useful. Thanks everyone for watching and stay safe on the water.